Do you think this drama will start a Do you think this drama will start a downward trend in Twitch? Yeah, we can we can transition from chess, chess drama and the GTA hacker. I think what's happening right now is people are realizing that uh, streamer friends or internet friends aren't like close at all. Oh, I already have it up. Like not even a little bit. They're just more acquaintances that team up for content. And I think not even the streamers realize that, that they're not even really friends. Thanks the resub simp and banana. James Corden called you out on his recent show. I wish I had beef with James Corden. Thanks resub samp and the bits sheepy. <clears throat> what happened? So it all started with shit camp. It all started with XQC not going to shit camp and not telling anyone that he wasn't going until it like happened, which is very standard for XQC. Usually he'll say yes to anything he's invited to, but then not show up, but he doesn't tell anyone. Like for Creator Clash, iDubs didn't know he wasn't coming until the day that the event happened. He just, he's not good at communicating. There's nothing wrong with not going. He, I just think he needs to be better at communicating. I don't think he does it maliciously. I really think he just doesn't think to do it. People like to try and spin it as like a malicious thing. I don't get that impression. I really just think he is so focused on stream and content that things like checking in with people, updating people, he doesn't even think to do. It never at any point comes across him, comes across his mind. So then after that whole shit camp debacle, everyone started dogpiling on X and then uh, from there, things spiraled wildly. So after that, it then became this giant thing where uh, a, a breakup was made public, uh, a stream was held where a lot of things that probably shouldn't have been public were made public, uh, very personal stuff. And fast forward from that disaster to, uh, was it yesterday? Yeah, it, it, it was it two days or two days ago or yesterday with Slicker and all the drama. Two days ago, okay. Time's moving at such a weird pace right now. This drama's got us in like a time dilation field here. It's like the fucking hyperbolic time chamber from Dragon Ball, but instead of training strength, we're just wrapped in drama. Uh, then it was Slicker was outed for all kinds of scams. You know, taking money from viewers, taking money from friends, and for a brief moment he united all the streamers like everyone was like setting aside their differences like uh you know at the end of the day we're all human we all bleed red and we all got scammed by slicker but that truce was short, was very short-lived because then the conversation became weaponizing slicker's addiction to target gambling on twitch as a whole which is obviously a massive hornet's nest and a very complicated issue that really can't be boiled down to black and white despite a lot of people's best efforts and that became a huge problem, not only on Twitch, but on Twitter. So on Twitter, there is a hashtag, uh, Twitch ban gambling floating around. Uh, people were talking about protesting Twitch streamers talking about, you know, uh, not streaming in order to make like a big stand against Twitch until they ban the category and, and all of that. So that obviously then created a war against the people who do gamble on Twitch and the people who don't like gambling on Twitch. Uh, now, one of the most outspoken ones was Train. Train was very vocal on Twitter about it's not the streamer's responsibility to... I, I'm obviously putting words in his mouth. I'm just trying to boil it down. The gist of what he was saying, and I don't disagree, is it's not a streamer's responsibility to care for his audience's mental their mental health, like to monitor them, to make sure that everyone's mentally sane. But I do disagree that it's the same when it comes to gambling that can work when you're doing something kind of trivial like a, a game with some kind of predatory monetization in it versus something that has so many studies around it like slots like i think they're you can't really compare the two but basically his argument was you know it's their fault if they get addicted to gambling you can't just ban everyone outright 
Train made a great point that the people that should be banned are the ones that are trying to like glorify gambling with only showing wins, uh, only talking about gambling positively. I think Train has like big disclaimers on his stream about how it's only 18 plus and you're going to lose. Like you are literally always going to lose, which is a fact. When you gamble, you're going to lose. The house always wins. You're going to lose. Uh, and then in response to this, I know Miz made a tweet to Train. I didn't get to see the tweet, but he made a treat to, Twain, to Train about it. And then Train clapped back with like massive meat. He basically made a tweet insinuating that Miz was complacent in covering up a sexual assault that had happened at some point. And then people ran with that story uh, saying like Miz committed sexual assault. So it got bastardized right away, just completely perverted from what Train said. And then Train clarified further saying, no, Miz didn't commit the sexual assault. He helped orchestrate the cover up of a sexual assault. And that's where we're at right now. So far, I haven't seen any proof of anything, uh, but a lot of people are taking everything as like a fact. And right now on, tw on Twitter, everyone's saying Miz is a sexual deviant who has sexually assaulted women or something. But I haven't seen anything like that other than just a tweet from Train mentioning it. Now, I have no clue what it's in reference to. That's a developing story. That was happening right before I hopped on. So that's where we're at in this giant soap opera of this week. I think that's like the most concise breakdown of, of all time on everything that's going on. I don't think I missed anything. It's been a crazy week. And it all started with E-Rob's ban. Oh, that's another thing I didn't even mention. E-Rob went to shit camp he made a video saying, I'm going to beat up one of my viewers at TwitchCon. The viewer was a friend. The viewer was someone he was familiar with. Like, it was banter. He wasn't actually going to beat this guy's ass. But Twitch banned him for it. Initially, it was like a seven-day ban, which is still outrageous. But then they increased it to a 30-day ban, which is criminal. Which is criminal. And now, after that, it's we entered into a dark dimension. A very dark timeline. So now I think I covered everything. I don't think I missed anything. That was like the full eight minute brass tacks on everything that's gone on on Twitch this week. Shit is crazy. Thanks to the resub. They're the tier one enemy in the resub. Samus, Havoc, Pepsi, Guppy, Toxic, John, Labrow, Milk, Metamorphosis, Codebreaker, and the Five Gifts Subs Hazard. Thank you, man. And the Tier 1 Nobula and Tier 1 State. I've only briefly heard about that, Nathan. The Call of Duty cheating thing. Thanks to Prime, Fortnite, and Rurik. Yeah, it has not stopped popping off. LSF has been eating good. This number right here, 59k online, I don't think it's ever been that high. This this subreddit was dead for like six months. The only thing that had interaction was anytime there was like a booby nip slip or something. Then those clips would have like eight comments and that'd be like top post. Now it's going crazy. Thanks, Risa. Bridge in the Prime. Dan. Euromon, Tier 1 Corum. And the Bits Holden. I feel like this is a good way to push a Twitch after dark and can only participate if they're 21 and up. <coughs> where they're at least the age of being able to take it off the normal platform. I guess before we continue to dive into it, I'll give my whole perspective on gambling. I've said it for six months. I'll say it again. I think slots is a, a very dangerous thing. Like it doesn't matter who you are, what your age is. When it comes to real casinos, if you're under 21, you're not even allowed on the same carpet as a slot machine because it's treated so differently. You can be near poker tables. You can ne be near blackjack. You can't be near slots when you're under 21. If Twitch doesn't want to take any kind of big gambling stance, I really think in order for you to access the slots category, you need to be a verified adult, like a legitimate verified adult or 
Twitch needs to just like outright say we gotta we gotta slow down on the slots. What's this? Miz admits to Slicks SA. What does that mean? Well, what you can deem of it, it's sexual harassment, whatever. At a low scale, it's not really a big deal. I don't think people really gave a shit and really cared. Yeah, I'm gonna turn this off if you're gonna be like this. I'll just turn it off. Well, what you can deem of it, it's sexual harassment. What is this in reference to? Whatever. I don't know this situation. Can someone break? Can someone give me the cliff notes? What what the fuck is that situation? Out of context. That, that, that's the impression I'm getting because I have no, no fucking clue what that's even about. Don't insult me for being on light mode. I'm not logged in. I don't use anything on light mode, but I'm not logged in. And I don't remember my login, so light mode is how it'll stay. Look at the twit longer. Who's? There's a million twit longers. It is the most fucking fire day or fire week of drama. Everything is a fucking twit longer. Who's? Who's twit longer? There's a million. He's a tier one Juliana in the prime glory and the resub janitor, emo, wolf, and bridge. Adriana, Adriana Lee. There's no twit longer here. Why are people why are people just feeding me wrong information? It's an old twit longer. Oh. How old? A year ago. What? How the fuck am I supposed to find a, a year old? Here's a resub, Jason. Okay, someone said Slick tweeted. Will his be a, a summation of what's happened here? <clears throat> I have never sexually assaulted anyone and never will. I have never had any intentions of ever harming anyone. I go out of my way to check on someone and get accused of rape. This is unfair. I'll be getting a lawyer ASAP. Learn from the Johnny Depp situation and think first. I don't really like that last sentence there. If you had stopped after getting a lawyer, I think that'd be pretty concise. I, I don't even know the situation. But that last line, that's that's not it. This is it. You, you can't... Don't give me links. Just tell me where to go. Fuck. I, links don't work. How many times do you have to get, like, auto-deleted before you realize links don't work? <laughs> just, just tell me where to go. Okay, here. Is this... Will this catch me up? This is a two-hour bot. I'm just... Thanks for the Prime, Tito. Okay, here. Thank you, Jay. Finally, someone gives me at least, like, the cliff notes. All right. Uh, looked it up when it was first mentioned. Adriana Lee passed out drunk, and it said that Slicker felt her up and grabbed her chest while attempting CPR, while others felt he was feeling her up, and apparently... ...his crew are saying she's making a big deal out of nothing. Is that accurate? Not, not a crazy slick, not slicker. Sorry, sorry. Uh, crazy slick, sorry. I, I was, I, I guess I just had slicker on, on the mind because of everything this week. Yeah, not, not slicker. No, that's not correct. This, this is, this is so hard to keep track of. Jesus. Just scroll down in LSF. 
Well, this is the tweet I was just talking about. I can't watch this because it's Destiny, so I'm not allowed to. Nope, you can't because he is a banned streamer. I'm not allowed to. You can watch it, just cover the cam. Bro, E-Rob got banned for 30 days for making a joke with a viewer. You think I'm actually going to take any chances with Twitch and their rule enforcement? You're out of your fucking mind. No. Maybe like a transcript? XQC did. XQC is the biggest fucking streamer on the platform. He could go to himself and only get like a seven day ban. I'm not, I can't play by XQC's rules. Is there a big cornet in the prime Otacon? Thank you, Silver Spirit. Finally. A useful source. Okay, here. This was the tweet longer for tw from 2021. Okay. Uh, I, I don't... It should be fine, right? January 19, 2020, went to Novaru's 21st birthday party, and because I went with some of my <clears throat> closest friends, I believed it would be safe for me to enjoy myself. Got very intoxicated, ended up blacked out. Leading the rest of the story, leading the rest of the story, what I've heard from multiple witnesses and how I feel about it. I was told I was kissing my best friend, Enna, and another one of my close friends at the time, consensually. Crazy Slick was following us around, trying to kiss me, trying to kiss her, and at one point I was told that he and I ended up kissing. Apparently I was passed out in one of the rooms at a party. He came into the room while I was unconscious. She's in the chat. Is this, uh, is this an accurate uh, explanation? Is it Prime, A Dog, Potato, Narisa, Maid, Bunny, Ferunial, and Cornet? She said it's out of date. Okay. Uh, here. Where, where should I go to get educated on what happened? Well, there's no point in finishing reading it if she's saying that it's not accurate. Discord? Okay. Uh, my Discord name's Big Moist. It's... It, don't, don't worry about the name. It's actually me. It's not some weirdo from an MSN chat room. Her VOD covers all. Her VOD is two hours. I, there's so much drama to cover. There, There is no way I can watch all two hours. I'm just trying to give like the ESPN highlight reel of everything that's going on on this site, man. Because this week's been so fucking outrageous. Hey, hey. Hi. All right. So what's the situation? I don't know what shit do about it. What do you have questions on? I, like, I actually have no idea at all what any of this is about. Like, so from, from like, the top, I don't know anything about it. I'll give you the TLDR, I guess. Um, so a long time ago, uh, January 2020, I was at a party and I was drinking um, and people were drinking and I ended up falling asleep because it was at an Airbnb. So I fell asleep in one of the rooms and I had, um, like two of my friends, no, three, there's a whole bunch of people in this room watching me, making sure I was okay. And, um, crazy slick walked in and tried to quote, check my pulse by doing that. He touched my neck and my chest. And as a woman, you know, I have boobs. So he continued to try to feel my heartbeat feeling around my chest. My friend said, hey, please stop doing that. Please leave the room. And he left. 
And then he continued to come back and do it multiple times. How do I know this? Because I was sleeping in my VOD, um, the person who was watching over me, um, well, one of them, there's obviously a group, clarified the whole situation on what he saw. And, and his girlfriend was there, and I'm really good friends with his girlfriend. Well, I'm good friends with him too, but. And then the next day, how did I find out about this? The next day, he tweeted at me, hey, are you okay? Last night, and this is in the original tweet longer as well. Last night, the guy with the black Justin Bieber hair kept touching you when you were sleeping to try to quote, check your pulse. And I was like, dude, what the fuck? I was so uncomfortable. But as a smaller streamer, I did not say anything. Fast forward to July, 2021, a girl named Novaru, her Twitch chat or her Twitch career was like starting to die down. And me and her were friends, but at this time we are no longer friends. So she decides to bring up the fact, like bring up the story, because I've obviously told her the story. So she tells my the story and then she doesn't say my name. So oh. LSF is in shambles. Mitch is spam calling me. Everyone's like, you need to say something, you need to say something. I had to cancel physical therapy that day. And I went and I went over to my friend Kyle's house. He was the one who protected me. He was the one who told him to leave the room. He was the one who told who told me the next day. He's not a streamer. He has nothing to gain. So I went over to his and his girlfriend's house. And I was just, you know, hanging out there. And all of a sudden, I hear Maya, Mitch Jones, and Barry walk in. I'm like, oh my gosh, like, this is not what I wanted. I just wanted to, you know, talk about it and write something with Kyle and Enna. So then I... um write the twit longer and I was, you know, told to water it down to to make it look good, to have like an even point. I was promised that things would get better and I wouldn't be outcasted socially if we came to an even point where I expressed, you know, so it made me uncomfortable and I used certain wording. Um, basically it was watered down because I was told I should just stay anonymous. I shouldn't say anything at all. So we went and we wrote the tweet longer. We edited it. Maya had to proofread it, sent by Ms. And later I was told that, um, Ms. sent Maya because she's quote, one of the more credible, nicer girls on the platform. So then I came out about it and they commended me for coming out about it. It's all in the videos. There's videos of them saying, we're so proud of her for coming out so fast, for working out so fast. There's uh, screenshots of Ms. saying, hey, sorry, like, thank you for coming out about it so fast. And then over time, rumors are told about me and I'm being made, at first it was like, oh, like you did this, swept under the rug. I'm the bad guy. I'm the bad person. I'm, you know, the reason like, like so depressed you know like I, they made my narrative from thank you for coming out to drama whore oh she she's a whore anyways blah 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 like saying all these like bad rumors about me i i've gotten so many dms today saying like yeah these rumors are things that were said about you to try to get people to try to get me to not hang out with you and people who didn't want to be involved with me because um just there's rumors spread so it can make me feel feel like so in their eyes it would seem like i deserved it and not that their friend was a creep so okay if you have any questions let me know okay well i appreciate the the summation of it so just to backpedal a little bit you mentioned that they someone asked you to make it more even what what exactly was that situation like basically i was being guilt tripped because my was like well if you say something we're gonna have to kick him out of the house and like Matt is gonna be really sad about that. Like we're gonna have to kick him out of the house if you say something. And I was like, what? and this was for the initial twit longer. Yeah, so that's okay. why if you read the twit longer, it's very, it makes Slick like, like look like an angel. Okay. And everything was fine for about a week or two until things started, you know, going to shit. Okay. All right. And then there's obviously that clip of um, Slick. Let me, or no, um, this clip, let me find it for you, of 
uh, Miz saying that um, it wasn't a big deal and nobody cares about it. Yeah, that's what. So I, someone sent that clip. I had no fucking clue what that was about. I felt like I came in on season five of a show. So that's in re- yeah. like, was this you talking to Miz about the situation or no. what? What is that? It was clip like a from? secret stream he did on YouTube a long time ago that like nobody really knew of until I guess it got brought into light today. And it really like hurts to listen to because I haven't listened to it until it was just sent to me. Who brought it to light? Was was it like a like a viewer just, found it or? It's kind of like it's something that gets brought up all the time. Like if I'm on LSF, um, everyone's like, "Oh, that's that's the whore who like tried to cancel Crazy Slick." You know, like it got brought from, "Oh, like thanks for doing this." To, "Oh, like I'm the bad guy. My career has oh, been." Okay. And I obviously, if anybody is like curious on the details, I go into more details on my VOD, but it's a long pod, so I understand why, you know. Yeah, no, no worries. It, this is a fucking wild situation. You said this was 2020? When it happened in 2020, it came out 2021. Okay. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. It's awful. It uh, just sucks because everyone's like, oh, she's doing it for clout, whatever, but it's like... It's like my life and my trauma that's being like played up. And it's like both times I did not come out about this. Today, it was like, oh, I had to clarify because obviously fucking Twitter today, you know? Um, and yeah, Train yeah. has been nothing but supportive to me this whole time. So he, has, he did not use my like story in a negative way. Like he's always been supportive of me. And um, he like so, told me before saying it too. So. so just one thing that I want to say in reference to all this. I, this isn't necessarily like specific to this story, but I always feel like if this was happening and Train knew about it, why wait to use it as a gotcha kind of thing? This seems like a very serious thing, so why use it as a dunk? I personally feel like it was such, it was so pushed on the rug because it was already out. And I feel like, I guess now was a good time to bring it up for him. But it's always been like, for me, like this has been my life for the past year. Like I'm constantly facing repercussions of the fact that I'm the smaller streamer and I got the shit end of the stick for something that I didn't even want to come out about and something that happened when I was fucking asleep. And it's it, it's something that has like torn me apart. And just to be able to speak about it and tell my truth, it means a lot, you know, like for people to actually take the time to listen to what I have to say and not it being diluted, not it being watered down so people don't get kicked out of their houses. You know, that's why like I, I am grateful for the opportunity that Train presented because I've been like suffering with this for a really long time. Yeah, no, I totally understand that. I, I guess I just meant more like, for example, had I known something like this came up, I wouldn't have waited to use it as like a weapon. You know what I mean? I feel it like this is something like that should something have been public. That was swept under the rug. So was it, like, I didn't see it when it happened. Was this at the time, like, It was known? on LS, it was, yeah, it was top of LSF for a okay. while. Okay, so then it just but kind of faded out of people's memories then until today? It was, like, kind of, like, covered up and trying okay. to, like, move on quickly. And even in the clip, he's like, everyone forgot about it. Like, nobody cares anymore. So it's like, damn. It's, like, something that people don't really care about anymore. Maybe it doesn't affect him anymore. Something that affects me every day. Okay, I see then. All right, I, I thought it was, like, something that... Uh, he had kept quiet about until just now to use it as ammo. Yeah. Okay, but if it was something that they did publicize and for some reason it just people didn't remember it, then that makes a lot more sense why he'd bring it up again. Yeah. Well, I'm sorry to hear about this situation. That's awful. Thank you for um, taking the time to listen too. And if you have any more questions, just let me know. Yeah, I just no want to make it clear because last time, um, like obviously there's a lot of misinformation. Like I watched a bunch of like. I had to find out the way people were talking about the situation through like LSF and like a lot of like lies and like things that weren't really like true were being told. So that's why like I hopped in chat and I was like, hey, like I can clarify because I don't want to have to go through that again. Yeah, no, I think that's very, a uh, very good idea because uh, I think this was the best summation I could have gotten for the situation as well as anyone else. So I appreciate you taking the time there and hope you have a, a great rest of the evening. And uh, thank you. Again, sorry about the whole situation. That's good. Thank you for hearing me out. Yeah, no worries at all. Take it easy. Bye. What a fucked situation. Yikes. So before she came in, had you guys heard about that before? Because I had never heard shit.
Okay. So that must have just... Most people are saying yes, but a good chunk are saying no. I'm guessing this is just one of those things that, I guess, really just fell out of people's collective consciousness. I think that is terrible. Uh, again, I wasn't there, so I don't know if there's any wiggle room where, you know, Crazy Slick wasn't groping. I think the excuse of I was checking her pulse multiple times, especially now given the situation as she explained it, I don't see that being very strong. That seems like something I would have learned about on one of the alpha male channels for how to get like a quick squeeze from like the actual sexual assault YouTubers. Like that doesn't sound uh, reasonable, like like something that someone would actually do. I'm exaggerating. I'm talking about those alpha male channels that are like, oh, if you go up to a woman and you, you have interest, why not just give her a tight squeeze around the waist? Like that kind of weird shit. That, that, that's what I was referencing with that, the, the pickup artist community. I think uh, that's not the checking pulse and CPR thing doesn't hold a whole lot of water now that she's explained the situation. That's very creepy. Things a tier one work, tier one gin, Narisa, Matzo, Karaga, Majin, Majora, Aaron, Long, and tier one Mushy, Matt, and tier one KZ, tier one Matt, and tier one Mondo. Can we go back to chess? Did something new just happen in chess? I'm trying to cover everything that's happened on Twitch this week because it is <clears throat> fucking crazy. I haven't seen any platform, YouTube or Twitch, have this much of an avalanche of shit over the course of just a week. Thanks to Tier 1 Auslander, Tier 1 Lord and the Resub Tuna, Daisy, Nuclear, and Depth. Yeah, I, I'm still a little spotty on exactly, like, why Maya or Miz would have instructed her to be lighter on the twit longer or the situation. I'm not sure. As I understand, Crazy Slick's not even, like, a member of OTK. He's just, like, one of their friends, right? And I think as everyone's learned over the last week, streamers and streamer friends aren't really close. So I feel like if this... If they truly believed Crazy Slick had done something creepy, they would have had no problem cutting him out, I would have thought. But I don't really know the situation. I'm literally just learning about this in real time. There's the resub Darms and Omega and the resub Toxic. Asmin's threatening to leave OTK if Miz is still friends with Crazy Slick. This is fucking wild. So I'm, ass I'm assuming Asmin's in the same boat as me and had no fucking clue about any of this. Because it looks, it seems like this is something that a lot of people just may have missed. Because I didn't hear anything about this. Make the prime gunky peak in the resub cosmic and toxic. Addictions will make you do anything. Bro, this is the <laughs> it was not slicker. This this was a completely different person. But that statement is actually still true. Addictions are bad. Agreed. Uh, fat true on that one. It all fell apart after Queen Elizabeth passed. <laughs> yeah, Queen Elizabeth sailed into Valhalla and plunged Twitch into the Dark Ages, man. The shit that's been coming out is vile. I don't know what that even means, Pyre, but thanks for the bits. We scrag. Mm. 
Thanks for the reset, Dad, bud. Yeah, I think those were the main topics, and some of them are still developing, like chess, like this. It's fucking crazy. <clears throat> it's sad. Train went full nuclear. This is insane. There's a lot of people that dislike Train. Uh, I disagree with Train on a lot of things, but overall, I've always had a positive impression of him as a person. I think he actually had... I, I think statistically he has, what, like the 10th most gifted subs across the whole platform. He's very generous to his friends, and he really seems to be, like, a good-hearted person, even though I don't agree with a lot of his takes. I, he, If nothing else, he's always struck me as someone who's been honest. I don't, I didn't like him trying to weaponize this situation. At least that's how I viewed it. I see this a lot when there's drama. XQC did the same thing. Miz, I have nukes. I've got the nukes, Miz. You don't want your career ended. If you have horrible things, you know a streamer's done horrible things, please say it. Like, this isn't a battle of numbers. This isn't a battle of clout. You say it. Like, these are, like, that's a, a crime. Sexual assault's a fucking crime. It shouldn't be used as a gotcha moment. Like, I don't like that. I've never liked that. Handle it. Get it to the proper authorities. Get it to the proper people, the proper channels. And remember... Not everything needs to be like a, like a song and dance for viewers, for content. A lot of things transcend that. There's the resub Killer Ray, Shooter Kid, and the Bits Turd. And the resub Luke. And the resub Clone. Them withholding info makes you think others have dirt on them as well. The impression I've got is a lot of streamers lock themselves into like a cold war with each other. Like they just compile a ton of blackmail that can be used at any moment, like gunpowder and a, like a powder keg. It's, it's silly. It's fucking silly to me. You don't have to be friends. And in fact, I think this has shown everyone most streamers aren't actually friends. But like if you have all of this awful information on someone, you can't just make it like a fucking piece of content for yourself or, or to like bring them down as content. Like handle it like legitimately handle it i think it's very silly very silly and it always throws into question like oh if this person is so bad and they've done all this awful stuff why would you then be friends with them and, and do all these things with them it, it's not good for anyone including yourself it makes you look bad too 